Welcome back once again. We're talking with audiologist Melissa Reese. Thank you once again for joining us. And, and on the subject of the technology, just uh, things have improved a lot from a technological standpoint. Uh, give us some idea of the capabilities of today's hearing aid and assistive devices as opposed to maybe, say, just a couple years ago. Well, if you've ever been in a church service or next to someone and their hearing aids whistling or hears that and it drives everyone else crazy around that and usually the hearing impaired person doesn't even know. Now what we do is we do a special calibration when we fit the hearing aid, um, we put it in their ear, we run a special test, we know how loud that hearing aid can get before it will go into what we call feedback and then it will produce a sound wave and opposite of that. Basically, it will prevent that feedback. As soon as it starts, within one or two milliseconds, it will shut down. So you don't have to worry about walking around and your hearing aid whistling. Sometimes that's a big concern of my patients. They say, I'm not going to wear that because my friend has one and it's always whistling mm -hmm. and I don't want to sound like her. But that's not always an, um, an issue anymore. We can prevent that due to the new technology that's in there. We also have what's called um, noise suppression or background noise suppression. So special circuits in the hearing aid, they learn how to distinguish between speech and background noise. Of course, not perfectly. It's going to amplify many things, but it can significantly improve listening and background noise. Sometimes people will say, well, only hear the background noise. That's all this hearing aid um, lets me hear. But with the new hearing aids, with those special circuits, it can enhance um, speech understanding and reduce the background noise. So but the cost of this technology hasn't really gone down like other forms of technology that we've seen. Um, it has not really because the improvements are still coming on a yearly basis. And we see drastic improvements in the chips and the circuitry and the software and the capabilities of the hearing aids. So while the price is not drastically going down, the improvements are still coming along and drastically improving the hearing aid user's um, perception of the sound. So it's more customized than ever before. Absolutely. It is programmed precisely to that person's hearing loss. We will test them in the booth at each frequency, then we take each frequency and program that hearing aid based upon how much loss they have at each tiny sound, and then they can even customize it further. They wear it, then they come back to me, I give them a little pad, and they say, this sound was too loud or this was too soft, and I sort of know where those are, and I will go in and then fine tune that hearing aid program so that hopefully when they leave again, it's, it sounds even better to them, more natural um, and more customized. Because there's no way that you know what Abs they hear without absolutely. them telling you. Absolutely, absolutely. How about prevention? I, I, I was telling you that when I was a reporter many years ago, they used me as an example in a story and they said, you know, you have hearing loss. And as we talked, I thought, how could that have happened? And I spent many, many years from childhood through college in an orchestra. And you told me that was putting me at risk for hearing loss. Absolutely. Um, orchestra players are probably the number one. Violin players have the number one incidence of hearing loss in that because the violin is so close to the ear and that frequency or that pitch is so high. So what we can recommend today um, is musician's earplugs. They're special earplugs that reduce the volume but maintain the fidelity or the clarity of the sound. They wear the custom earplug and uh, connected to an amplifier right here and then they control the sound so they don't have to listen to the blaring music and it keeps their, them from having hearing loss. But how about their concert goers and the audience? Is that Are they at risk? Absolutely you're at risk. Um, I sometimes wear earplugs when I go into movies because it's so loud. Actually it sounds better to me because it's not in saturation and then I can't hear all the noise around me and I can just hear the movie perfectly. But yes, the, the, the way you can prevent hearing loss is when you're listening to music is if you're going to listen to it loud, you have to listen to it for a short amount of time. So if you want to listen to it for a long time, which most teenagers do with their iPods today, then you have to bring that level down. Um, and it's hard to say. People will ask me all the time. They'll say, well, what level? Is it 50% half the volume on my iPod? How loud is loud? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's hard to say. And there was actually some new research. I just took a course on that, is that depending on how the music was recorded, how many bytes were recorded, and the MP3 player, the iPod, those volumes can vary significantly. So if I tell you 50%, that might not be loud in one person's iPod, but it might be too loud in another person's iPod. 
So you really need to monitor that, making sure that if you wear the earbuds that somebody standing right next to you can't hear your music. If they can, it's too loud. You can download software for your iPod that will prevent it from getting to dangerously loud levels, but that's only on the Apple iPod. There are many other devices, MP3 players, which I have, etc., that that option is not available. The trend today seems to be almost as much uh, toward the volume as it is toward toward the bass. I mean, if you don't shake in the chair when you're listening to the music, then <laughs> the it's not right. The car behind you, or right? the car behind you, as the case may be. Uh, is that the worst, having that that super bass like that? But you mentioned violins at the same time, and that's a much higher frequency. The the folks that are listening to the music at a really loud bass and their cars are shaking, like you said, um, they are susceptible to hearing loss, but not nearly as much as the violin. It's mm -hmm. due to that frequency or that pitch. Those low pitch sounds aren't nearly as damaging as those high pitch sounds. Um, so a violinist is going to have much more hearing loss than the teenager that rides around in the car. So when I yell at the, the guy in the car next to me, he can't hear me after all. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take a lot longer for him to get hearing loss, but he'll get there. I'd also heard with the iPods, even if it's at a lower level, you don't want to let your child do it more than, listen to it more than 90 minutes. That's it's the absolute th maximum. That's only for volume. If you're listening to a safe volume level, which it's hard for me to say, but I can typically listen just because I've done so much, that you could listen to it for eight hours really? and be okay. Yeah but not everyone knows what safe volume level is and so they might need to adhere by that 90 minute. We're just rule. about out of time. We should mention that you, you uh, offer the community services and uh, wanted to uh, give you a chance to just kind of make a pitch, if you will, for what kinds of things you can offer to, uh, to the community folks uh, of all levels and also low income folks that might uh, not be able to afford some of the hearing aid uh, devices. Absolutely, we do full, um, full audiological evaluations or hearing tests um, at our clinic and then we can determine the type and degree of hearing loss and we can offer them some of the new hearing aids, some different types of hearing aids, um, we'll fit them with that. We can also see children, babies, um, test for their hearing and we can do um, educational evaluations, auditory processing. We are part of a program for low income um, people who um, would need hearing aids but aren't able to afford it um, and our information about that can be obtained at our clinic but we can, um, we can assist low income folks to obtain hearing aids. Melissa Reese, thank you so much for joining us today.